are we going to jump straight into Pacer? Can you, um, what is what is Pacer? Can you introduce the game to those that maybe haven't heard about it and maybe tell us a little bit about its history? Hey, so Pacer started out as Formula Fusion. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an anti-gravity combat racer for up to 10 players inspired by early Wipeout, mm -hmm. uh, late F-Zero, uh, Star Wars Episode One racer, like the mm. kind of the 90s anti-grav racing yeah and it was our love letter so to speak yeah to really high speed combat racing uh we're just starting out on one of our tracks this is one of our new tracks the ajura track uh this is set in an abandoned mine in australia okay <coughs> So is this this is set in the the, the far future of <laughs> Earth? Yes. Yeah. So this is set in 2075. Right. Okay. And it, when the player takes part through the single player campaign, it is the sixth season of Anti Grav Racing League. Mm -hmm. I saw a sign for bio meat. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're all eating in 2075. Yeah, it's yes. the future. Oh, it's nice. <laughs> food it's of the future. It's probably better than some of the food I've had available to me here at Res, unfortunately. <laughs> so, uh, mm, bio meat. You found food here. Yeah, I did find food. Yeah. yeah so it says no horse meat in this. Yeah. Morning. <laughs> so that is uh, one thing that we wanted to do, and we were trying to create the game to create uh, like a world beyond the track as well to make. The, to give the the race some context, mm. so if you look beyond the track, you'll see sponsors like uh, BioMeat that mm. maybe aren't as impactful to, the, not as directly related to the sport. Yeah. But they are, you know, brands that still have a strong, clear iconography that want to display themselves around the track. Some others that you might see as you race around, like uh, Marnie Marine or Sofex, are actual sponsors of the racing teams that right. we have in the game. So I, I've always, those games you mentioned earlier, like F-Zero, Wipeout, like I've always liked how they've conjured so much of a world, like, beyond the sport, you know, like, they, they just, they arrive as these fully formed, kind of, futuristic yeah. landscapes. It, it's, it lends a reason for the sport to be there, it makes yeah. it all that much more immersive. Like, yeah. I guess there should be sponsors, there should be teams, they should be... You know, in like in and around the tracks, they should be in the garage mode. Yeah. Uh, and and so the racing itself, can you talk us what's what's at the heart of this? You know, obviously you mentioned lots of different games there, but they're all quite different in terms of their styles. Oh so yeah. so what have you kind of sort of really focused on? What's at the heart of your racing? So at the heart of Pacer is uh, it's kind of a more of a, a strategy, less straight arcade. It's more about speed management. Okay. So it's a very skill-based racer. Right. And it lets your track, your craft, feel like a ton of spaceship. It feels like 400, 500, 600 kilometers an hour mm. because you need to think before you approach a turn how you'll manage your speed. Mm. How are you going to wrestle this ton of spaceship around yeah. the track? Um, and can you talk maybe through some of the things we've, we're seeing on screen here in terms of like your health and the shields? Okay, so each craft has two health bars, so to speak. They have a health bar and a shield bar. Uh, the idea behind that is that we don't have a pit lane in okay. place. Uh, we have the shield, which can be refilled as you fly around by going onto shield pads. Mm -hmm. And you have the health, which cannot be refilled. So your shield pads on the track are always like off the race line. They're always they're slightly out of the way of that optimal path. Yeah. So as you go through, you need to choose, you know, if you can risk the longer lap time. Yeah. And keep what health you have, or you know, can you divert out of the way? Can you get a shield pad because your health is running low? Right. Your health becomes that kind of risk pool. Sure. And you're constantly making that decision as you race. And are there pickups on the tracks as well? Is that what we see? So there are three different track pads that you can see here. Uh, these are the weapon pads. Mm -hmm. So you drive over a weapon pad and it will refill ammunition for your weapons. Right. Uh, you choose two weapons before you race mm -hmm. and you equip one of a series of modifiers to alter how the weapon behaves. Okay. So it's more of a strategy element to it. You're yeah. not picking up random weapons as you go. You select your loadout before you race. Right. And then it's up to you during the race to make the best of it. So you can kind of develop your own sort of style, your own kind of taste in weapons. 
Absolutely. That is that is another one of the kind of the, the core tenets of Pacer mm. is to be able to have your craft, your style, your way. So Steve has the swarm on his right weapon, right, which is a series of small explosives that will be fired at a craft he has a lock on to. And oh, then after a short delay, after the last one hits, they will all explode at once. Right, right. So it becomes uh, kind of a game of timing. Can he make the make the, the ammunition he has last long enough in order to build up like a large explosive force? Right. Or does he maybe want to stop sooner and fool his opponent into uh, taking see. a defensive measure when he still has a lot of ammunition left? And can you defend yourself against the weapons, or is that that shield management you were sort of talking about? So there are some defensive weapons as well. Right. So we have uh, we have a tank that will protect you from weapon damage and weapon impulse. Uh, we have a cloak that will render you invisible and stop other crafts from being able to lock on. But of course, taking a defensive weapon means that is a weapon slot you do not have for an offensive weapon. Mm. So the option is there, but it is to take that will be something that you don't get to you know, be offensive with. Right. And and can you talk a bit about the ships themselves, you know, that how you kind of came towards their designs also, you know, well, we can see a variety of different ships. What are the sort of differences between them? So we have five basic craft in the game. Mm -hmm. And each one represents like, an, an entry point for... Nicely done, Steve. Thank nicely you. done. <laughs> You've played this before. <laughs> He's practiced. A little bit. <laughs> for the honor of the team, it would have been... It, you, you couldn't have gone home with your head held high had it been anything but a gold. Uh, not on stream, not live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, no, not being good. Not being good. <laughs> so, yeah, we have five craft available in the game. <laughs> And it represents kind of uh, a starting point for different styles of play. Right. So we have um, our Vixen, Saber, Python, Dragon, Voxel that right. represent an all round ship. Uh, that is the Python, that is our tank. It's a very high health, very high shields, very heavy. Uh, that is the Dragon, that's much more of a precision craft, so the air brakes are much sharper. It is. Kind of a slightly lower uh, health, mm -hmm. but a higher top speed. It's cool. a bit more, a bit more of a precision vehicle. Uh, that is the Voxel. That is our high speed, high top speed, low acceleration kind of a pros craft. Mm. Uh, that is the Vixen. That's our all around craft. It's good for starters. And that is the Saber. That is our high agility craft. So very right. quick at turning, very technical. Sure. Uh, each of these craft represent kind of a, a starting point for how you want to enter into pace, how you want the, the style that you want to play. Right, right, sure. We encourage players to take these craft, go into our garage mode, and tweak them and customize them to their style of play. Oh, nice. So we're going to uh, jump into a, another race? Indeed. So here, this is the, the weapons <coughs> you were so talking about. Yes, yeah. these are our loadouts. So in the garage mode, we have um, five craft slots that you can see in blue at the top. In each slot, you equip a card that will give you some penalty that you want on your craft and some sorry some bonus that you want on your craft and some penalty that you need to manage oh okay so there's not there's not going to be a straight best build you can um. c you customize a craft to your style and if you have the skill you can manage the the bonuses that come with it sure sure uh, the weapons at the bottom in orange and purple so you have two weapons each one has two modifiers that alter how the weapon behaves. Oh, okay. So if you want, say, um, a straight rocket that mm -hmm. deals more damage, you can have that, but maybe the modifier uh, gives it a smaller explosion radius. Right. Maybe if you want a, a gravity effect on it, you can have that, but maybe its life is shorter, so it'll uh, explode sooner. Yeah. So you can express your style and how you interact with other players oh, that's as well. Nice. There's no just instant win Mario Kart red shell, <laughs> blue <laughs> shell. Not <laughs> at all. No it's blue far, shells. Far deeper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, mm, yeah, much deeper, much more interactive. Cool. Um, a, a lot of the weapons, what I love about them is there's no Im instant slow if you're hit. Right. You're shifted sideways. Oh, okay. So you can counter steer and oh, lean good. into the hit. So you can express some skill in how, how you're you deal hit by with them. it and the damage management. Yeah. So is this the, the, so the sorry, Kerry. 
this is the this is the uh, the track selection. So we've, mm -hmm. this is only four of the fourteen available tracks okay. that we've got within our expo build. Um, of notes is. Uh, the tracks are just not one way. You can also go reverse. Oh, okay. There's also a nighttime mode, and there's also a mirrored mode, and you can oh. also then say, "I want to go reverse mirrored." So oh, the, amount cool. the, so the amount of the amount of the changes within the tracks is quite significant. Was it eight? Uh, there are there are eight variants, variants to yeah. each track by mixing and matching oh, those okay. options. So there's a lot of different ways to express a mastery of that circuit. Oh, that's good. So that's you it. might you might master it one way, but then you'll you'll go in reverse, and it's a whole new track. And then you might mirror it again; it's a whole new track again. Yeah. So the longevity just through one map is is, is significant. Oh, awesome. Um, are you going to show us Fire Fury? Indeed. Um, so where's this where's this track mirrored. based and set? So Fire Fury is the based. Time. The night lighting is beautiful. I love it. So Fire Fury is based in Northern California. It's in the US. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of winds around like a, a Death Valley style environment. Oh, okay. Very bright orange, kind of desertous, quite dusty. And as you can see in the, the background there, the track actually like lifts up on its side and manages to wind oh, yeah, around wow. the environment as well. That's it fun. can cross canyons. It's, it's kind of a, a medium difficulty track. Yeah, but it it looks beautiful and it it plays really well. Uh, actually, sort of speaking to the looks, um, obviously on the stream we're streaming at 1080. It doesn't show off what this game can really do. Mm -hmm. Like I know that you're showing it in 4K here at Res. Is yeah, that right? Yes. Yeah. Um, can you just talk us through some of the, the sort of direction you've taken it, sort of visually the tech and and what what the game's kind of capable of? So, the game is well. We are going to be launching at 60 FPS on all consoles. Uh, it is enhanced on PS4 Pro and Xbox One X to 4K 60 FPS. That's oh, nice. Um, there aren't many games that are kind of hitting that on Xbox One X. Oh, you've got all those powerful machines. Uh, there aren't many games that are capable of it, but we know that given the look of it, we wanted as high a resolution as possible. We wanted a smooth frame rate. Mm. Because of the speed, we needed that to convey the experience of going this quickly. Mm. And we think that's, that is, again, one of our big selling points, one of our big kind of USPs is that it is 4K 60 FPS enhanced on, con on enhanced consoles. So if you are watching so the stream and you are also at Rezd, for some reason you can pop by their stand and, and see the game uh, in, its, in, its, in its full glory. The glorious 4K. Um, um, and um, I'm kind of interested in, in, in what your sort of background is as a studio and you guys, you know, where do, where do you kind of come from, you know, what, 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 you know? So, our studio, R8 Games, uh, started I don't know, a while ago. I joined the studio uh, three and a half years ago. Okay. Um, most of us working there now that are in the studio, we're based in the northeast of England. Right. Uh, a lot of us are graduates of the university there. Oh. And... Uh, we've kind of come from obviously all different places to the university to study there and we've been fortunate enough to move into employment afterwards and we've gotten to work on this. Yeah. This, um, is, so is this your, is this your first game? Uh, personally, uh, yes. This is our first game. That's very uh, as we mentioned earlier, we were Formula Fusion at first, mm. but we've rebranded. We've... We took what was good about Formula Fusion, what we liked about it, what we did right, and we've improved on it. We've mm. iterated it on it. We stripped everything back to the basics, and we redid it right. We, did, we improved upon it. So we redid our physics. We've re-optimized a whole load of our art assets. Mm. We've completely redone our single-player campaign. Mm -hmm. And it is it is now Pacer. The, the name change represents the amount of work that we've done. There is so little there that was Formula Fusion that yeah. to call it the same name just yeah, isn't it's the same. It's a completely different game. It was stripped to the bone, uh, as Carlton said. You know, we've rewritten the camera system from the ground up. The physics is from the ground up, and uh, I think more importantly for the single-player campaign, uh, the AI was uh, completely stripped out and has been uh, rewritten using machine learning. Oh, so right. it actually has, yeah. uh, you know, a uh, 
a neural net uh, to speak, uh, which is uh, running the AI bots, which are not only currently back in the office loading the track, but will uh, also learn from the uh, the player. Oh right! Yeah. So that's quite a you know quite a significant change uh, for this game. Tech worthy of 2075. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, absolutely. And um, will there be a multiplayer uh, in the game? Flashbang. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's a very bright flash of white yeah. light. It's the yeah. flashbang, one of our weapons. Kind of a defensive disorientation weapon. Right. Uh, but yes, uh, when we launch, we will have up to 10 players multiplayer. <laughs> what if it's another opera? I was, I, I was distracted. <laughs> <laughs> you were chatting, you were chatting. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, we will launch with 10 player multiplayer. Uh, we will have uh, VOIP in the game, so you can talk to each other, you can uh, chat as you race. Uh, there'll be uh, a, a good series of multiplayer game modes, so everything you're used to, like a, a race, uh, there's an elimination. Uh, we also have our pass the bomb mode, so you start as a bomb carrier, you need to right. ram other drivers, run away quick. Um, we have a storm mode coming in. Right. So it's like... Um, there's a storm around the entire track, and all the players need to keep within a small sphere that protects them from it. Oh, that right. shrinks and moves along the track. Oh, so you're kind of forcing everyone into. So sort of, is that like a sort of like an elimination thing if you're outside? Yeah, or? if you're outside, you start taking damage, so you need to stay inside as long as possible and force everybody else outside. Awesome. Um, I think we've got time. I mean, did you want to show another track? We've got time to, yeah, hop, sure. into, to hop into one more track. I don't know if we'll get through an, an entire <laughs> lap of it, but which of the, which of the, the well, two? Well, we'll do Trans Atoll. This is um, this is one of the most technical uh, tracks in the entire game. Right. Okay. <laughs> I'm not particularly great at this. Track, <laughs> yes. Ooh, good luck. You're well, on the live stream. I, I shall use the <laughs> agile craft for this one. Yeah. <laughs> good choice. So this is Trans Atoll Night. Uh, this track is set in kind of a, a disused ex-industrial shipyard based in the Gulf of Mexico. Okay. And it, I say, each track has its own environment. Right. So each one winds up feeling like it has its own personality. They wind up being very different, so very colourful. This has its own like, idea. It's very industrial, very rusted, mm. very kind of old and disused. Right. And I just think yeah. it makes a really interesting environment to race yeah. in. Absolutely. I think what um, we haven't mentioned, but what some people might pick up with some of the logos in the track is we've got the Designers Republic um, that have done a lot of the branding within the game. Right. And uh, all the advertising you'll see is from uh, the Designers Republic. Uh, we also, from a, uh, a music perspective, is we've got Tim from uh, Cold Storage that was uh, one of the original uh, guys that was on the original Wipeout game. Oh, um, so right. we have got some yeah, brand get... new music yeah, from yeah. Tim specifically for this game and also some previously uh, unheard of and unreleased tracks that are also exclusive to this product uh, as well as uh, other uh, bands like Dub FX and uh, more to be announced. We're just in the, uh, the process of signing a record label which will bring in a number of other artists uh, with more music uh, for this product. It's exciting. It feels like a, a very ambitious project. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But as it is our commitment to, to doing it right. We've been fortunate enough to be able to revisit it, to be able to improve mm. and to realise this ambition in the tracks, in the craft, in the physics, in the garage, and as Steve just mentioned, uh, in the soundtrack as well. Mm. Wonderful. So we're, we're coming to the, the end of our session, but where can people, um, when, can, when can they play it and where should they be looking for it? Uh, well, they should be looking for this uh, PC on Steam initially, um, and then it's coming out at, at day and date on uh, console being uh, PS4 and Xbox One, as Carlton said, it's enhanced on PS4 Pro and Xbox One X in uh, 4K at 60 frames per second. Release date will be uh, before the end of uh, Q3 this year. Wonderful, exciting stuff. Well, thank you so much for uh, talking us through it. And uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot here. I feel like I've got a really good understanding of what's what's it. Uh, what's Don't talk and drive. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs>